Hey guys and welcome to Snellfed Performance. Today on the channel, Nate is going to be doing a little bit of an overview of his own personal 2003 Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 8, kind of giving you a little bit of background and history of the vehicle itself. As always, we do appreciate you tuning in and hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching. All right, YouTube, time to do the breakdown on my car. Um, 03 Evo 8, I bought it in late 2004. Uh, didn't receive it until about 2005. Um, I'm the second actual owner of it other than the car lot. So went from California to Detroit, Michigan to me. So I bought it from um, a car lot, which I'm not going to name the name of the car lot because, uh, yeah. Anyway, so uh, when I bought the car, obviously she was stocked to the bone, which is the best way to find an Evo. Uh, I ended up uh, getting the car and right off the bat uh, hurt the transfer case and uh, the transmission was, wasn't far behind it. But uh, after uh, getting a new transfer case, um, you know, hurt the motor, I actually cracked the stock piston in half and uh, went from there. She's had a 35R on it, then I sent that in to have a 3586 put on it. I am on my sixth motor and only one of them have I had catastrophic failure. Another one that I actually rebuilt that was like kind of catastrophic was I had a spark plug ground come loose and went through the engine. So it hamburger to piston, hamburger to head, and I decided to rebuild it. Uh, I've never actually kicked a rod, never windowed a block. Um, I've spun one bearing um, out of the six motors ever, but uh, never had like full on catastrophic failure except for the time I broke a timing belt. That was, yeah, literally, um, I use Power Enterprise belts. Uh, I do like their belts, but uh, my belt was older and I was getting ready to go do a uh, uh, roll race event. And we're, I was doing a quick testing pull and boom, snapped the belt, broke all the intake valves off, shoved them through the pistons. And yeah, well, yeah, so. I hurt that motor, and that's the first time I actually full-on hurt hurt a motor. But uh, a couple motors, I pulled them out to do other things, uh, like you know, uh, transmission clutch, you know, stuff like that, and ended up um, selling them. You know, somebody wanted the motor. A um, couple of them, la or one of them lasted. The other one had an issue. So, I mean, seems like every time I pull a motor, I end up selling it. But uh, so far, uh, this motor uh, found the combination that worked. It's a fun car, <laughs> and we're pushing it to the extreme. It is a street car, and I'm not going to put a roll cage in it. Um, I've got the Mustang for the drag car. We're going full drag on that thing. We're going to go, you know, insane with that. I don't want to ruin the first brand new car I've ever bought. Um, the interior is all original. Um, I don't do, you know, I try not to do the kind of blingy you know somewhat ricer appeal that some people do um i mean a lot of evos have a lot of tasteful mods but i try not to uh make my car look too uh attention grabby if you know what i mean you know no canards no giant front spoiler you know i actually took the wing off because uh here in idaho they think that you know all ricers have wings and uh you know this is a 900 horsepower street car um the truth is with the car, um, I haven't been beat other than by drag bikes, two of which have beat me pretty good. So, but they are drag bikes and those people know who they are. But um, I mean, so far uh, I achieved the goal that I was looking for to, uh, with this car and I'm just not going any further with it. I think it's gonna stay where it's at. Maybe we'll dial it back a step, you know, just to make it more, uh, streetable because right now it's winter time and like literally I do a third gear roll on and the car changes lanes I mean I get no hookup and I've got Nitto NTO 5s be it that these tires are old and uh, it is time to get a new set but um, I mean <laughs> they still got tread on them so uh, um, yeah I got rid of the original wheels uh, sold those a while ago got some uh, inky RPF ones uh, bought those from a friend of mine powder coated them black uh, the theme on the car is kind of like a silver and black, so I kind of kept with that theme. So I'm going to kind of go over the car, throw it up on the lift, 
give you guys an idea of everything that I've actually done to the car. And just so you know, all in all, with buying the car, I bought it back, like I said, in 2004 for $23,000. And paid the car off, and yeah, <laughs> car sat on jack stands for a good year while I was paying car payments on it. That's awesome, but it is what it is, you know. But this thing has been my baby. You know, this is uh, what my dad's Camaro was to him. This is my, you know, Camaro, if you want to call it that. You know, it's, it's, it's an 03 Evo, and it's one of the best platforms uh, I believe there is. I mean, I have nothing against nines. Uh, my buddies own nines and stuff like that. I just don't like the active center diff. It tends to be weak when you're at the track. You gotta drain it so it'll, go, it'll default in 50-50 so it doesn't blow the transfer case apart. I've seen it too many times. Um, I do like um, the O3s and uh, like the RSs, those are pretty cool Evos too. Uh, I'm currently going to be doing a build on an, uh, an RS. Real mild build uh, for a friend of mine. Uh, he's just going through some stuff right now. He's just had a kid and uh, you know how that goes. It tends to be expensive but uh, you know he's working on it. Uh, hence why you see all those uh, parts over there on the table. Those are from his motor because he uh, spun a bearing and we got to pretty much start over from scratch. Hurt the crank and you know we just want to go you know a good mild build but something that's going to last. You know if I'm going to put my name on it I want to make sure it's right, you know, the best of my ability because I got to guarantee my work. But this is uh, this is the beast of uh, Idaho. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of drag cars out there that are actually quicker than mine. So um, I'll quit with the yapping and I'll get to the showing. <laughs> Pretty much, like I said, uh, I self-built, um, tuned by a good buddy of mine. Um, We've made a pretty good power for what it is, and uh, let me show you the uh, the spiel in the car. So, um, this is the catch can. Built it from scratch myself. Um, as you can see, I got a block breather. I've got the valve cover breather, and then I got a 10 a.m. breather over here to the valve cover. The valve cover has actually been uh, surfaced or you know uh, basically ground down. To get rid of the actual fins that are on it a friend of mine uh, sold me this valve cover got a little blemish right here but oh well uh, it's a nice smooth valve cover i do like a really clean look um, we got fic 2150s uh, magnus 10 a.m fuel rail as you can tell this is my fuel line uh, i'm running a 10 a.m fuel line i'll uh, elaborate a little bit on the uh, fuel system here in a sec uh, the magnus v3 manifold and a boomba 75 millimeter throttle body anodized black i like I said silver and black theme um, uh, my good buddy, hi, at RevTech Motorworks built my upper intercooler pipe. I have, uh, done a small provision to it down at the intercooler, but this still pretty much remains his work. But, uh, I built the intake, this, the lower, uh, charge pipe. Um, this is a 6870. It has got a JM Fab, uh, manifold, 44 millimeter, uh, wastegate. Uh, still has power steering, JM Fab, uh, coolant catch can, a weapon R power steering reservoir and then I got the coil on plug the 300 M coils with the JM fab plate you know got all the little you know blingy stuff um, an air motive uh, fuel pressure regulator uh, running about 50 base uh, pressure uh, coil rad uh, radiator and the transmission as you can see down there is nice and clean and all that that is a TRE transmission uh, fully built Everything that you can do to the thing um, has been done. Um, has a stock final drive, and the transfer case is also a TRE build. Everything that can be done to that. Um, and everybody around here knows that I am running nitrous. Uh, the front mount is a, I want to say, fab. I can't quite remember exactly who I got it from, but it is a three inch. Uh, in charge and a three inch out so let's see here as you can tell um, I have uh, earned some stickers at our lo local track um, this one is the most recent this year I uh, thank them for not uh, kicking me off that was uh, cool of them so uh, here's the uh, nice wheels um, I do have the wheel woods because I am running 15 inch slicks on this thing when I do race it. So I did the STM brake kit in the front 
and it does have the same problem as the STM brake kit that we put on Mark's car, so eventually I'm going to adjust it and fix that once I put the new pads on, which is today. I did just paint the Brembo rears. So, like I said, I just wanted it black. As you can tell, you got a little paint sticking out right there, but I just painted those. There's nothing wrong with those brakes. They cleared the uh, 15, so there's, you know, that's just how it is. Um, roll defenders, not too happy about that. Took my time, heated it up, and it took the body line out of it right here. Eh, I'm not a big fan of rolling fenders, so if you can avoid it, avoid it. Uh, this is a Cybon trunk. Not too many of these. Um, I do like this one because I'm not a fan of the duck bill. The duck bill just, it, it looks funny to me. I like this continuing all the way from side to side. Um, this is my more favorite, my most favorite trunk. But uh, did the little, little stick on carbon fiber pieces. These are kind of cool, you know, hey, whatever, you know, I, mm, what it is. Uh, still got the stock mirrors. Uh, didn't really do a whole lot with the, um, you know, the, the body uh, wise other than the front lip. Now, as you can tell, I brushed a curb <laughs> on accident. I can't believe I did that, but I brushed a curb there. And then my damn uh, trailer, my wench, destroyed this area right here. So eventually I'll be getting a new one of these. But this is just basically carbon fiber over fiberglass. It wasn't that expensive got the uh, Evo 9 MR headlights because uh, the Evo 8s they have the factory fog right there and uh, I wanted to keep with that but I also wanted the black chrome the other thing too is to kind of keep with the theme kind of smoke these out um, I did trade a buddy of mine a long time ago these are the Evo 9 tail lights uh, black chrome uh, did want to uh, you know just go with it you know when I got these I got the headlights you know just to kind of uh, uh, keep with the theme uh, the plate is uh, one I think is kind of fun, you know, try to roust out, you know, some of the people to, uh, you know, get out there and, and, you know, try to race. Like, oh yeah, he wants, he thinks he can beat me, you know, one of those things. Try to have some fun. Those uh, Vipers and Corvettes and uh, Hell Kitties, even though I don't have a Hell Kitty underneath my belt yet, want one. Uh, while I got it open, this is the interior. As you can see, no gauge pod, real stock, standard. Uh, steering wheel is a little, a little worn, not a big deal. Uh, the bolsters and the seats, I uh, got a little spot right there. I try to take care of it. Um, got the Evo 7, I believe, this shifter knob. I like this because the other one kind of wore down. Got this because my handbrake was wearing down too, and plus I used the handbrake to launch. Uh, there's the gauge pod. I do like this lower one because it is out of sight. You don't see it up there. I'm not trying not to be real flashy. Never turn the stereo on. I'm always listening to the motor. And these are the, the switches that I have down here. Uh, nitrous arm, uh, computer arm for the nitrous basically. This tells the computer that I want to use the spray. Uh, shifts into that, uh, that map. Uh, this is for the bottle heater. And this is actually to turn the two-step off for the arc 2 box i'm running an arc 2 box for my ignition system to power the coils and we were thinking that maybe with the nitrous we wouldn't be able to actually use that as a two-step we're finding it's it's doing okay so no big deal okay so i put my ignition system inside the car um, i'm not sure if they actually like heat or not but i wanted to make sure that i didn't have a problem so right there that's my uh, Dynatech Arc 2 box. Got it all set up. Just kind of, you know, stuck it to the HVAC system right there. All the wiring through the floor and whatnot. Uh, definitely uh, got that all wrapped up. Made sure that was all good. Uh, kept all the stock covers and stuff to make sure that, you know, everything's all nice and clean. The AEM back there. There's the wire for it and all that fun stuff. There's the... Um, giggle juice uh, do run that for the um, upcoming year we're gonna see if we can go out there and uh, beat some more bikes but uh, we'll see you know guys are fast uh, I do have a cutoff switch since my battery box is located in the trunk um, I got this style because as you can tell I did not need to cut the bumper it literally went through perfectly right there. This is a JDM Evo 9 bumper. As you can tell, 
it does still have a stereo i do got you know speakers and stuff cut you know i got rid of all the actual you know beauty stuff and all that uh don't use the intercooler sprayer that's what that one's for I unplugged it still use that kept the net because uh as you can see here um i do still kind of use this i put the bottle blanket in there this is the relay for the bottle heater it does have a heater and uh, i do use the bottle blanket um and then that is actually a remote for my bottle pressure so i don't got to check this i can literally come in here it's kind of cool i think so anyway but check it out guys boom there's my bottle pressure so i flip this switch on that heats up the bottle i tell what my bottle pressure is boom you know like i said incognito as i can all right i got the car up Let's show you what I got going on underneath it. Kind of tight. So, got a belly pan on the car. A uh, hole for the wastegate dump. Um, a lot of the races that I go to, they do require, like if we go to Vegas and whatnot, they do require a belly pan. So if anything happens, you're not dousing the track with oil. You know, just to save things. So, uh, three inch intercooler pipe. I've had to adjust this a little bit. Uh, made sure it was good. This is actually the drain for my catch can. Uh, you know, built all that goes up there. As you can see, it's got the uh, the TRE uh, cooler right here. This helps the oiling of the transmission. Um, I built all this. This is my my three inch charge pipe. Uh, got it. You know, it's kind of tight in a few areas. So you know, I said this is a, uh, you know, don't mock my welding. I was uh, just starting then. Uh, definitely got some tight clearances there. Uh, as you can see right here, AC is still on the car do have it does work uh, i do have an stm oil cooler kit because uh the one time i spun the bearing on the car i decided not to run the stock inner or oil cooler i just wanted to get a brand new one i have the moroso pan and i love this pan it's a good pan doesn't leak you know does really good for me um, i do recommend on these pans get rid of the actual um, uh, gasket fitting for the turbo drain back and weld on a 10 a.m because those things leak all the time and as soon as I welded on 10 a.m., I never had a problem after that. So, I run a three and a half inch downpipe, uh, three and a half inch O2 housing, you know, the O2 dump off the turbo, and then it upgrades to four inch right here. This is four inch aluminum. Uh, my buddy at uh, RevTech Motorworks uh, a couple years ago helped me build this. So, went in there and full four inch all the way back. Clears does everything no problems no big deal i mean she's a little tight right here but uh you know did a v-band right here for the muffler but uh it, it did grow a little bit it used to be centered but as you can tell it's kind of you know kicked off to the side it is what it is that's aluminum for you uh, the other exhaust that i had from stm had a vibrant really thin vibrant and it melted my bumper i'm sure that uh uh this one would start melting it but uh, i put this on there to try to keep it from uh you know looking like crap but uh this is the tre rear end um it has a little sight glass it's kind of nice you can see how your rear end fluid's doing i love this rear end this rear end has been bulletproof for me uh 7500 rpm drop uh, clutch drops no issues stock axles i have a busher mustache bar um, this is a DSS drive shaft. This is chromoly. This is aluminum. Um, when I got this, for some reason, I think they spun this and didn't have it right. So I had to get this thing rebalanced, but no big deal. It's been a good uh, drive line ever since. Um, let's see. Oh, and here we go. So this is my fuel system. All right. So I have three pumps. There's three um, as new pumps. Hope I'm getting that name right. But uh, they're 330s, so I'm doing 990 uh, liters per hour. And this is how they are. They go into this. This, by the way, was an expensive freaking fitting right here. I think I spent like 50 bucks just on this because it's got three 6 a.m. lines to a 10 a.m. And then I ran the 10 a.m. all the way up. Here's my fuel filter. This is my break-in for the actual uh, nitrous system. This is where I'm actually pulling the fuel for the nitrous after the fuel filter. And then as you can see, it goes up. This is my 6 a.m. return line. So, um, 
Back before I did the uh, double pumper video, uh, this was one of my, I don't know, like fourth gen uh, uh, pumps that I built. And I ended up wiring my return line to each side of my tank. I'm using the saddle siphon, but the thing was is that the actual return on these uh, inserts are so small that literally a 4A in line sits right on top of it, no problem. But um, I didn't think of actually doing what I did on the actual double pump of, pumper. Bleh, can't even talk. Uh, I didn't think of actually doing what I did this last time on the double pumper that I built. So uh, eventually I'm going to end up modifying this thing and doing the 6A in and getting rid of the, uh, the saddle thing that I've got going on here. I'll show you. So I uh, can't really see it, but here is my Y for the return line. This guy right here. This goes over and up and then this is the actual return. See how tiny that is? Yeah, that thing is pfft, tiny. And then I went up over the top of the drive line and then it goes over and then around and up and then goes to the saddle side. On uh, Evos, they do have an actual saddle side um, like insert, kind of like the fuel pump insert on the passenger side. So I just drilled a hole into that and uh, just you know went and dumped some fuel into that. That way I'm not restricting my uh, return line uh, for the amount of fuel that I'm flowing. So uh, eventually I'm probably going to do the uh, the twin uh, 525s, but the system's working. I have no problems with it. So, you know, why, uh, why fix it if it ain't broke? So, let's see. As you can tell, this is my nitrous line. It goes up. I've been trying to keep it all as tight as I possibly can. I did get rid of the EVAP line. I did get rid of, you know, a lot of the other lines uh, to kind of keep this area clean. Cut this off so I can use these mounts to actually hold everything up you know there's my mount you know but uh, as you can tell right here here's the brake lines I kind of cut it off but I wanted to keep everything above that uh, there's the transfer case and um, as you can tell I've got stock struts with teen springs I uh, haven't done coilovers yet can't justify spending the money yet but I do have a strut that's starting to go out so eventually I'm gonna have to to get three and a half inch to fit that is my spacing right there that is three and a half inch off the turbo which I do have a turbo blanket to a v-band and as you can tell it's really tight I had to build my own dump tube and uh, yeah she is she is tight as can be that's all three and a half inch so um, uh, TRE transmission never had a problem I am running an Exeti triple uh, this thing has been a a trooper dude I mean Exeti triples for the win I can't remember if this is an STM or a busher but uh, you know got the actual mount the torque mount uh, pretty much a little polyurethane mount right there nice mount I have a clutch stop um, stock slave I think we all run stock slaves um, do got an electronic boost controller uh, works really well um, as you can tell that turbo is tight um, check this out I had to right here as you can tell it's still kind of rubbing on it but I had to shave the front trans mount to get this turbo to fit this is the 6870 with an H cover so looks like I still got some more trimming to do as you can tell right there it's still touching eventually I'll go ahead and address that maybe cut that whole piece off call it a day um, as you can tell right there, see, I welded on my, my fitting, patched the two holes, uh, only way to go on this pan. Uh, TRE transfer case, I did not get the little cover that they have. It's, you know, it's just fancy. I, I don't really think it serves a, a real, real purpose, but, um, so, uh, basically that's what I'm doing is like, you know, before this year starts, I want to make sure I'm going to go over the car and everything's good to go. Um, Sure, we're going to be beating the crap out of the car. Um, definitely want to get a few races off this year. Maybe I can get a, uh, a Hell Kitten race. Do got the uh, stainless steel brake lines. They do come with the Will Woods. And I went and put and bought some for the rear to match. Um, you know, this uh, car is real basic. I mean, it's a full on street car. Um, I try not to, uh, you know, over exaggerate some of the things that I, you know, really did need and uh, just you know kept it plain and simple uh, even as far as I did cut out my my front crash bar 
but I did leave the areas. Uh, the area that's underneath the headlight actually holds the bumper up, up flush to the headlight. So I left those. Oh, and then one and final piece is, is um, I built this. This is a intake tube, four inch for my intake. It goes up, as you can see up there, there's my filter right there. And this tube goes up and feeds it fresh air. Um, as you can tell inside here, um, it just literally just ducks all the air from the front end of the car up into the actual where the air cleaner is it does work i do got a big old round dirty spot on the bottom of my filter so it is working it's not like a ram air uh, i thought about doing that but then i couldn't really incorporate the filter but i do build those and it's kind of cool it works you know but obviously if you got acd you can't do that so uh yeah that's um that's the overview of the car and i mean that's about it you know let's uh check some fluids change some stuff and you know just make sure she's on the up and up you know this year uh we're gonna be put i want to put some new tires on it if i can afford it and uh maybe do some mid 555 r's or the nto 5s again i haven't decided which these ones are getting kind of hard and like i said um as cold as the roads are when the weather outside is as cold as it is i'll do a third gear roll on and the car just wants to change lanes so um, you know, all wheel drive car, true 50, 50 split. It's got an LSD in the transmission transfer case and rear end. And I mean, she, when she comes on, she comes on hard. So, um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's the overview of my car. Anybody and everybody in the Valley, you know, that wanted, um, to know exactly what the car is all about. That's what my car is all about. So, uh, yeah. And hopefully you guys enjoy some more videos. Um, we're doing our best to come out with uh, more videos. Um, I want to get some uh, other, you know, video, video um, like um, not cameras so much as like the uh, GoPros that actually stabilize because I do know that uh, when I'm being, you know, animated with my hands, I tend to jostle the camera around. So we want to get a couple stabilizing GoPros and, you know, just, just put out better content for you guys. So, um, yeah, you know. Stay tuned for uh, future uh, content and uh, future builds. We got a lot of them coming up. So uh, we are going to kind of center around uh, 4G63s, but there's going to be other things. So, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's snail fed for you. All right, guys. Have a good one. Well, and that wraps up this episode here at Snell Fed Performance. We appreciate you stopping by and checking out the channel. Hopefully you give us a like and subscribe for future updates on Mark's Evo, as well as other projects we have down the line. Have a great day and thanks for coming by.